All right, take a look at problem number one on the worksheet. We'll go through uh, the idea of standard deviation again. Uh, then we'll look at the z-star also. When dealing with the standard deviation, um, you just right now have to set up a table. Okay, so you have to be organized in your data or in how you deal with this. We have our x values of 85, 75, 94, 89, 72, and 89 again. When you type in this list and write the list down, that gives us a column of numbers that we have to find the mean. That's the first thing that we have to determine. So we can add up all of our x values. So we just add down the column. Piper, what are you give when you add down the column? 417 when you add down this column? Is that what we get? 504. 504. Okay, 504. Now to calculate our mean, we just take our 504 and divide by 5. Whole number of values. Awesome. What do you come up with? 84. I'm sorry, what? 84. 84. It, it's supposed to be 6. Yeah. Oh, 6 of 4? No, oh, 6 values. I missed one. 85, 75. Mm -hmm. 85. There you are. <laughs> Hiding on me. So when we add down the column now, what, what do we get, Austin? Still 504? So we have 504 divided by 6, and then you get what? 84. There we go. Now, the little KYC activity here, because our next column, we have x minus x bar and x minus x bar squared. Now, what you can do with your calculator, and this is a nice little technique to be able to use because we're going to be we're going to take this 504 and we're going to divide by 6 and we get this 80. We get to 84. Now, when we go to our next column, we're going to have x, our value, minus this 84 every time. Okay, what you're able to do, what I want you to do is I want you on the left hand side here. You have an STO button. Okay, I want you to hit the STO button. That's going to take your answer and it's going to store it. And I want you to hit your variable button up here, X. So I'm taking this 84 and I'm storing it to X. And hit enter. Another 84 is going to come down. Now, what that does is the variable x now, whenever you use that variable x, it's going to assume a value of 84. So when we go to now our columns, as you work across your column, well, 
it's nicer what I mean when you have decimals here and you have to use decimals okay it's nice to be able to just not have to use, deal with all the decimals but what you can do is go 85 minus X and that's going to give us one hopefully you could do that in your head I'm hoping and then we have to square that so we have a square and we can square that answer where this is helpful is when you go to the next line, 75 minus X, you get negative nine. Then you square that value, you get your 81. So it allows you to save clickety clacks in your calculator. So I don't have to find 84 every time I can just find X. Then we have 94 minus X. Well, hopefully you can say that's 10. Hopefully you don't have to, you can do mental math that gives us 100. 89 minus 84, which is 5, 25. 72 minus X gives us our negative 12. The common mistake is when you take negative 12 and square it, you got negative 144. This will just take the entire answer and square it to 144. So eliminate you po uh, possibilities of uh, uh, mistakes that you have. So we have one squared, then we had nine, negative nine, 81. 10, 100, 5, 25. Negative 12, 144, and then 5 and 25 again. Now, define our mean, our variance. Our variance, and if you read in the instructions, given the set of sample data, so this is a sample set of data. To find our variance, to find our variance, this is going to equal the sum of x minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1. Now, if it said it was a population, then we just have the value of n. So we can add down this column here. So go ahead and add down the column. If you haven't done it already. And we're going to divide this by 6 minus 1. Divide by five. This is your variance. When we add down the column, Grace, what do you add them down to? Three hundred and seventy-six. And we divide that by five. Mel, what do you get when you divide by five? 75.2, and then to find our standard deviation, we take the square root of 75.2. Once again, our roll of data values, our whole numbers, so you're gonna round to the nearest one decimal place. Brianna Shatterby, what did you come up with? 8.7. Now, to calculate our Z scores.
We have the value minus mean divided by standard deviation. Now your standard deviation we just calculated. So we're going to have to use, if, if we utilize this, the, the, the 8.7 is the one that's probably the more, more maintenance. What you can do is you can store that value to X now. So hit your store button and store that value to X. The calculator z-score, we have our value, 85 minus 84, divided by this 8.7. And if you look, this is value minus mean here also. It's the same value. Then we have 75 minus 84, divided by... 8.7. 94 minus 84 divided by 8.7. So go ahead and calculate your z-scores for each one of these values. And you guys two go ahead and do, go to two decimal places for the Z score. Because we'll eventually be using a Z table, and this Z table will go to two decimal places. If you only do one, that is fine for right now. We're not really worrying about the Z table yet. Eventually we will. And once again, it, this eventually, the Z scores will eventually be utilized to calculate probabilities. Which should come down to hopefully is 0 0.11 and negative 1.03, 1.15, 0.57. One point three eight and point five seven. Now, don't worry if you're off by a penny here, because what I probably did when I went through this, I probably stored my entire standard deviation, the square root of the seventy-two point five. I took the square root of that, stored the entire standard deviation, and calculated by that value. So, if you're off by a penny or so, don't worry about it. Questions about the second problem? The key with the second problem is just determining the outliers. Our five number summary. Our five number summary should be 24. 28, 35, 41, and 60. This is my Q1, Q3, Q2, or the median. 
You're in a quartile range. 41 minus 28. This is subtract a few quartiles, which is 13. To determine your outliers, you multiply that by 1.5. which is 19.5. And then we subtract that from your lower quartile and add it to the upper quartile. So we have 28 minus 19.5 and 41 plus 19.5. So we have two values. If you lie outside that range of values, if you lie outside that range of values, you're going to be an outlier. Well, we have 60 there, but 60 doesn't lie outside that range. So I don't have any values that are above 60.5 or below 9.5. So we have no outliers. Any other questions you have? Once again, mathematically, it's not a huge thing. Not a doing off thing, but you just have to have patience as you go through the problems. This is the last of the material for chapter one and chapter two. Where this leaves us is on Monday. We will have an in class assignment. We'll have another worksheet that deals with chapter one and chapter two put together. That will be on Monday. Tuesday will be a review sheet, and Wednesday will be the chapter test, a unit test over chapters one and two. Chapter one is basically all the vocab. And chapter two is what we're doing here. And this sort of combines everything together. With a frequency tie, a diagram, histogram, ties it all together. Uh, five number summary, drop, drop, draw a box and which are plot at the bottom. On the back, you have a sample set of data. I want you to find the mean, median, standard deviation, and the z-score for each one. Okay, this is a sample set of data. Once again, a number in the first one on the back. It's a sample, and then the bottom one is if I give you a frequency distribution, calculate the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. So it's everything that we've been doing up till now. Questions? All right, the last 15 minutes are yours. I will post some solutions. I'll get some solutions up here.